ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ನರಸಿಂಹಯ್ಯ ನಮಃ ವಾಲ್ಮೀಕಿ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಅಯೋಧ್ಯ ಕಾಂಡ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಟೂ ರಾಮ ಸೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಸುಮಂತ್ರ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕ್ರಾಸಸ್ ದ ಗ್ಯಾಂಜಸ್ ಸಮರಿ ಆಸ್ ಪರ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ರಾಮ ಗುಹಾ ಗೆಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ಬೋಟ್ ರೆಡಿ ಸುಮಂತ್ರ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ರಾಮ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಆಸ್ ಎ ಪರ್ಸ್ನಲ್ ಅಟೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ಟು ದ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಬಟ್ ರಾಮ ಡಿಕ್ಲೈನ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಫರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ರೀಸನಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಹೆಮ್ ಸೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಟು ಅಯೋಧ್ಯ ರಾಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಣ ಮ್ಯಾಟೆಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಹೇರ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಲ್ಯಾಟೆಕ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಬ್ಯಾನಿಯನ್ ಟ್ರೀ ಪ್ರಕ್ಯೂರ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಗುಹಾ ಆನ್ ರೀಚಿಂಗ್ ದ ಮಿಡಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಮ್ ಸೀತಾ ಆಫರ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ಟು ಮದರ್ ಗಂಗಾ ದ ಡಿ ಟಿ ಪ್ರಿಸೈಡಿಂಗ್ ಓವರ್ ದ ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಕ್ರಾಸಿಂಗ್ ದ ರಿವರ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ತ್ರೀ ಹಾಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ನೈಟ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಫುಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಟ್ರೀ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಟೂ ಇನ್ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ ದಟ್ ನೈಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಗಿವನ್ ವೇ ಟು ಡಾನ್ ದ ಇಲಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಯಸ್ ರಾಮಾ ವಿತ್ ಎ ಬ್ರಾಡ್ ಚೆಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಪೋಕ್ ಆಸ್ ಫಾಲೋಸ್ ಟು ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಣ ದ ಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ಸುಮಿತ್ರ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೂ ವಾಸ್ ಎಂಡಾವ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಆಸ್ಪೀಷಿಯಸ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಓ ಡಿಯರ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಹವರ್ ಆಫ್ ಸನ್ ರೈಸ್ ದ ಆಸ್ಪೀಷಿಯಸ್ ನೈಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ದಟ್ ಬರ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಾರ್ಕ್ ಪ್ಲೂಮೇಜ್ ದ ಕುಕು ಇಸ್ ಸಿಂಗಿಂಗ್ ಓ ಗುಡ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ದ ಕ್ರೈಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೀಕಾಕ್ಸ್ ರಿಸೌಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಕ್ರಾಸ್ ದ ಶ್ವಿಫ್ಟ್ ಫ್ಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಗಂಗಾ ರಿವರ್ ದಟ್ ಗಶಸ್ ಟು ದ ಸೀ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಣ ದ ಡಲೈಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟುಡ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ರಾಮಾ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಗುಹಾ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಆಸ್ ಸುಮಂತ್ರ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟುಡ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ರಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ದ ಕಮಾಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ರಾಮಾ ಗುಹಾ ಕ್ವಿಕ್ಲಿ ರಿಸೀವ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ವೈಟೆಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಪೋಕ್ ಟು ದೆಮ್ ಆಸ್ ಫಾಲೋಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಎ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಬೋಟ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸಾಲಿಡ್ಲಿ ಕನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಸೇಲ್ಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಇನ್ ಇಟ್ ಬಿ ಬ್ರಾಟ್ ಟು ದ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಟು ಕ್ಯಾರಿ ದಿಸ್ ಹೀರೋ ಅಕ್ರಾಸ್ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಕಮಾಂಡ್ ದ ಚೀಫ್ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಗುಹಾ ಬ್ರಾಟ್ ಎ ಚಾರ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಬೋಟ್ ಟು ದ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರಿಪೋರ್ಟೆಡ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಟು ಗುಹಾ ದೆನ್ ಗುಹಾ ವಿತ್ ಫೋಲ್ಡೆಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಪೋಕ್ ಟು ರಾಮಾ ಆಸ್ ಫಾಲೋಸ್ ಓ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ದ ಬೋಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅರೈವ್ಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಮೋರ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಐ ಡೂ ಫಾರ್ ಯು ಓ ಟೈಗರ್ ಅಮಾಂಗ್ ಮೆನ್ ಓ ರಾಮಾ ರಿಸಂಬ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿವಿನಿಟಿ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಬೋಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯು ಯು ಕ್ರಾಸ್ ದ ರಿವರ್ ವಿಚ್ ಫ್ಲೋಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ಸಿ ಓ ವರ್ಚಸ್ ವನ್ ಪ್ರೇ ಗೆಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಇಟ್ ದೆನ್ ರಾಮಾ ವಿತ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಸ್ಪ್ಲೆಂಡರ್ ಸ್ಪೋಕ್ ಟು ಗುಹಾ ಆಸ್ ಫಾಲೋಸ್ ಮೈ ಡಿಸೈರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬಿನ್ ಅಕಾಂಪ್ಲಿಷ್ ಬೈ ಯು ಲೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಎಂಬಾರ್ಕ್ ವಿತ್ ಆಲ್ ಸ್ಪೀಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಇಕ್ಯೂಬ್ ದೆಮ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ವಿತ್ ಎ ಕ್ವಿವರ್ ಈಚ್ ವಿತ್ ಆರೋಸ್ ಫಾಸ್ಟನಿಂಗ್ ದೇರ್ ಸೋಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆರ್ಮ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ದೇರ್ ಬಾವ್ಸ್ ರಾಮಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಣ ವಿತ್ ಸೀತಾ ಪ್ರೊಸೀಡೆಡ್ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದ ರಿವರ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಂಗಾ ಸುಮಂತ್ರ ಜಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪಾಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮಿಲಿಟಿ ಅಪ್ರೋಚ್ ರಾಮಾ ಹು ನ್ಯೂ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೆಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಶಾಲ್ ಐ ಡೂ ಟಚಿಂಗ್ ಸುಮಂತ್ರ ವಿತ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಸ್ಪೀಷಿಯಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ರಾಮಾ ದೆನ್ ಸೆಡ್ ಓ ಸುಮಂತ್ರ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಕ್ವಿಕ್ಲಿ ಟು ದ ಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬಿ ಅಟೆಂಟಿವ್ ಇನ್ ಸರ್ವಿಂಗ್ ಹೆಮ್ ಗೋ ನಾವ್ ದಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಟು ಮೀ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟೆಡ್ ಅಬಾಂಡನಿಂಗ್ ದ ಚಾರಿಯಟ್ ಐ ಶಾಲ್ ಗೋ ಆನ್ ಫುಟ್ ಟು ದ ಮೈಟಿ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ರಾಮಾ ಸೆಡ್ ಫೈಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಡಿಸ್ಮಿಸ್ಡ್ Sumantra the charioteer was distressed and spoke
His mind afflicted with grief is aged as well. He is pressed down by a burden of passion. Hence, I tell you this. Whatsoever act that high-souled emperor may, enjo may enjoin you to do, with intent to oblige the desire of Kiki, it is to be done unhesitatingly. The kings indeed rule the states. With this end in view, that their will may not be frustrated in any undertaking. O Sumantra, carry out everything in such a way that the said emperor neither finds it unpleasing nor gets tormented by grief. Only after performing respectful salutations to the old and venerable king who has never known suffering and who has subdued his senses, you tell these words to him on my behalf. Indeed, neither I nor Lakshmana and Sita grieve for having moved from Ayodhya or that we are going to dwell in a forest. After completing 14 years, you will once more see Lakshmana, myself and Sita too returned apace from the forest. O Sumantra, this is what you should say to the king, my mother, all other queens and Keki. Tell Kaushalya again and again that I am keeping good health. Thereafter, convey salutations at her feet on behalf of Sita as well as myself and Lakshmana, the faithful man. Tell our salutations to the emperor too. Bring Bharata quickly. After his arrival, Bharata may be installed in the position as desired by the king. When you embrace Bharata and install him in the office of the prince regent, the agony caused by the repentance felt by you on our account will not overpower you. Bharata too is to be told thus, treat without distinction all your mothers with the same regard as you behave towards a king. As is your affection for Keki, so let it be for Sumitra and also divine Kaushalya, my mother. If you accept the princely kingdom with an intent to please our father, it will be possible for you to enhance happiness in both the worlds, in this world and the next. Sumantra, who was being sent back by Rama, was agonized with grief after hearing the whole of the discourse and affectionately spoke to Rama as follows. If I spoke to you fearlessly in a friendly tone without following courteousness, you ought to forgive my mode of expression, considering me as your devotee. How indeed can I return without you to that city, which, through separation from you, has been reduced to the state of a mother stricken with grief due to separation from her son. By seeing my chariot on that day, even with Rama in it, the people were lamenting so much. Now, if they see the chariot without Rama, the city of Ayodhya will even be broken asunder. The city will plunge into in misery, like an army in which its commander is lost in a combat with the charioteer alone surviving. On seeing this chariot, Without you, thinking of you, who thought, though residing far away, are established foremost in the minds, the people of Ayodhya must have been deprived of their foot today. The great perplexity that ensued on the occasion of your exile among the people of Ayodhya, whose minds were depressed through grief on your account, was witnessed by you indeed, O Rama. The cry of distrust raised by the citizens of Ayodhya will be increased a hundredfold when they see me with an empty chariot. Further, shall I say to the Queen Kaushalya as follows, Your son Rama has been taken by me to the house of his maternal uncle. Do not grieve. I cannot tell such words too which are untrue. How can I tell? I abandoned your son in the forest which words are true but unkind? How will the excellent horses obedient to me, which carried yourself, Sita and Lakshmana, draw the chariot bereft of you? O oh, the faultless Rama, for this reason, I cannot go back to Ayodhya. Pray, permit me to accompany you to the forest. If you leave me, even though I so solicit you to take me with you, I shall enter a fire with chariot and all. Here itself, the moment I am forsaken by you. O Rama, with the help of the chariot, I shall ward off those animals in the forest which create obstacles to your austerities. The pleasure of driving your chariot 
has been obtained by me because of you and it is through you that I seek the happiness that comes in dwelling in a forest. Be graceful. I desire to become your close associate in the forest. I wish to hear your lovely, lovely ascent with the words, be my close associate. O hero, if these horses too can render service to you, they can attain a supreme abode. By all means, I am leaving for good, Ayodhya or even heaven, dwelling in the forest with my head bent low, I shall render service to you. As a doer of wicked deeds cannot enter Amravati, the capital of Devendra, so also I cannot enter Ayodhya without you. This is indeed my desire that after reaching the end of your exile, I may take you back to the city of Ayodhya in this very chariot. So long as I am with you together in the forest, fourteen years will slip away momentarily. Otherwise, than this, they will multiply a hundredfold. O Prince, who are so fond of your dependents, you ought not abandon me. Your devoted servant, established in the path, followed by the son of his masters and always keeping within bounds. Rama, who was compassionate towards his dependents, spoke as follows to Sumantra, who was miserable, entreating him again and again in many modes. O charioteer, so fond of your master, I know your excellent devotion to me. Here, wherefore, I send you from here to the city of Ayodhya. Seeing you returning to Ayodhya, K.K., my younger mother, will get the proof that Rama has gone to the forest. Having completely satisfied about me having gone to the forest, K.K. will leave her strong suspicion that the virtuous king may be a person who speaks untruth. This is my first priority that my younger mother should get the extensive kingdom, protected by Bharata and thus ruled by her own son. For my pleasure and pleasure, of the king, you go along with the chariot to Ayodhya and inform all the matter matters that you have been asked to tell each in the way you have been asked to do. Having spoken thus to the charioteer, the courageous Rama consoled him again and again. Then he spoke the following reasoned words to Guha. O Guha, this stay in the inhabited woods is not proper for me. My stay should definitely be in a hermitage. Let an action diverted towards that aim be taken. I as such, wishing well of my father Sita as well as Lakshmana and having taken up a discipline to be followed by ascetics, wanted to proceed further, wearing matted hair, please bring the latex of a banyan tree. Guha immediately brought the latex to the prince. With that, Rama made matted hair to himself and to Lakshmana. Rama, tiger among men who possesses long arms, wore the distinguished mark of an ascetic in the shape of a matted hair. Then Rama and Lakshmana, the brothers, clad in the bark of trees and wearing a round mass of matted locks on their heads, looked bright like two ascetic sages. Having adopted the way of a hermit temporarily, along with Lakshmana, Rama then accepted the vow of an ascetic life and spoke to Guha, his friend, as follows, O Guha! Remain vigilant in defense, finance, internal security and public relations for a kingdom is the most difficult one to be protected. Then Rama, who was a delight to Ikshavaku dynasty, bade farewell to Guha and departed quickly, remaining undistracted, along with his consort and together with his Lakshmana. Seeing the boat on the bank of the river and keen to cross the shift flowing Ganga, Rama spoke to Lakshmana as follows. O Lakshmana, the tiger among men, you get into the boat stationed here unhurriedly afterwards. Having helped Sita, the virtuous wife, step into it, hearing the command completely of his elder brother, the prudent Lakshmana, by not counteracting it, made Sita to ascend the boat first and stepped into it afterwards. Then the glorious Rama got into the boat himself. Thereafter, Guha, the ruler of Nishadas commanded his kinsfolk to row them across the river. After ascending the boat, Rama too of mighty splendor then recited a sacred text, Dvaivim, Navam, etc., fit for Brahmanas and Kshatriyas alike and conductive to his own good. 
having sipped water as per scriptures and with extreme delight, Rama with Sita made obscenes to that river. Lakshmana of infinite splendor followed sweet. Bidding farewell to Guha with his army of men and Sumantra, Rama sat on the boat and directed the boatmen to move on. Propelled by the splendid and vigorous oarsmen, that boat furnished with a pilot rapidly moved across the water. Coming to the middle of Bhagirathi river, the irreproachable Sita with joint palms spoke as follows to the said river, O Ganga, let Rama, the son of the emperor Dashrata, honor his father's command under your protection. Having dwelled in the forest in full fourteen years, may he return once more to your bank with his brother, Lakshmana and myself. O blessed goddess Ganga, returning safely with all my desires fulfilled, I shall worship you with great joy. You, O goddess, flowing through three regions, namely heaven, earth and subterrane regions, include in your basin the rim of Brahma, the outermost of the six spheres enveloping the earth and are vividly seen on this terrestrial plane as a consort of the ocean king. O charming goddess, I, Sita, greet you and extol you too. When Rama, the tiger among men, safely returns and regains his kingdom, I shall give away a lack of cows, soft clothing and food to Brahmanas with intent to please you. O Goddess, after reaching back the city of Ayodhya, I shall worship you with thousand pots of spirituous liquor and jellied meat with cooked rice well prepared from the Solomon Rite. I shall worship all deities dwelling on your banks as also sacred spots and sanctuaries. O irreproachable Goddess, may the sinless Rama with mighty arm re-enter Ayodhya again from the forest along with Lakshmana and myself. Thus praying to Ganga, the efficient and irreproachable Sita rapidly reached the city bank of the river. Reaching the bank and leaving the boat, Rama, the best among men and the chastiser of foes, proceeded further along with Lakshmana and Sita. Then Rama, the mighty armed, spoke to Lakshmana, who heightened the joy of Sumitra as follows. Security is an in evitable need in the forest, which has unforeseen dangers and is uninhabited. O Lakshmana, go in front. Let Sita follow you. I shall proceed in the rear, protecting you and Sita. O Jewel among men, we must accord protection here to one another. An act which has gone out of hand whatsoever cannot indeed be Remedied again, Sita will experience the hardship of staying in a forest only from now. Today, she will enter the forest where density of people is not seen, which is utterly devoid of fields and gardens, has a rugged surface and is full of stumbles. Listening to Rama's words, Lakshmana walked in front. Immediately after Sita, Rama, the delight of Raghu's dynasty, advanced. Constantly gazing at Rama, who reached soon the other bank of Ganga river, the distressed Sumantra, his vision having failed due to the long distance and perturbed as he was, shed tears of grief over the separation from Rama. Having crossed the great river, Rama, the high soul, the bestowal of boons, equal in glory with the guardians of spears, then reached progressively the prosperous and the happy land of Vatsa which contained rows of beautiful crop. Having hunted there for deer, namely Varaha, Rishya, Prisata and Maharura, the four principal species of deer, and taking quickly the portions that were pure, being hungry as they were, Rama and Lakshmana reached a tree to take rest in the evening. Thus completes 52nd chapter in Ayodhya Kanda of Glorious Ramayana of Valmiki, the work of a sage and the oldest epic, Sri Moolarama Vijayate, Om Sri Krishnar Panamastu.